This is absolutely not a way to start out the new year, DC Comics. You are looking really bad, even if it is from last year. I want to talk about Superman Blue and Gold number one. This is actually came back up or I would not be talking about it because I did previously. Comic reviews in a minute. Kind of, sort of, let's go. Superman Red and Blue Anthology. We're going to talk about Untitled from John Ridley. Now, this story was absolutely disgusting, and we're going to hone in on one panel specifically. Superman's return because of what they did to him before. And simply what they did to him before was insinuate that they raped Superman over and over. They imply they raped Superman, whether it was by a bar in the background or their dick, for eight months. Superman! A bunch of communist dictators raped Superman over and over and over again. That is what this story is about. You have to be fucking kidding me. Why are you letting people like this write for your company? Clark wants to kill him? Are you fucking kidding me with this? Capitalism is a crime? This is a real story, by the way. Fuck this. Hold up. Yeah, that's me complaining for quite some time about this entire issue nearly a year ago. But unfortunately, sometimes these things don't get caught up upon, and sometimes people don't see the reality in the situation where this looks really bad. Even with me in this video, doing my best to try to give you guys some sort of context around this whole Superman R-word thing, I, it's it's pretty hard to add context when it's not there. Now, this is actually, and I've been rather critical of John Ridley, but this is why. This is the very first, I, well, not the very first, but one of the first stories into Infinite Frontier that I read. And I'm like, you're kidding me, right? You allowed this. And even going back to the point where I looked up Jamie S. Rich to get a hold of him and try to have a conversation of why this would be allowed. Yes, March 20th, 21 or 2021. Yeah, um, I don't know what they were thinking, but now they are paying the price for something pretty old at this point. So let's talk about this story. I'll try to give you a little bit of context around what happened, but honestly. Your initial gut reaction is probably correct on this. There is no amount of context I can add in a story like this about Clark Kent, about Superman, that is going to make you feel comfortable. Because this is disgusting. This is wrong in every sense of the word. And I really hope that DC Comics looks at John Ridley and goes, okay, we need a little bit more editorial oversight. Bring him in. Talk to him. Tell him, you know, you need to be better with the characters. Something. Because this sh is inexcusable. And I hope we don't see anything like this again. At least at the bare minimum. That's what this should be. Nothing like this should happen again. Yet Jamie S. Rich let this go through. And I don't actually believe Jamie is working for DC Comics anymore. Oddly enough, I have no idea why that could have happened. I don't know. Anyway, so this story is John Ridley. Like I said, and the art is great. The coloring is great. I don't blame a single person when it comes to that. But it is basically a continuation from the world's finest. It was a two-parter, 192, 193. And that is actually from the 70s. Now, this story was a Cold War era story. There's not much to even really add. It was Batman and Superman. And it was kind of a talk about, you know, communism versus capitalism and the re-education camps that actually happened during that time. So it was, you know social things at that time in the story there's nothing wrong with the original story it's actually very good but the fact that you are not even including batman makes zero amount of sense and i was shocked because going back to this story when it originally aired when i did my original video i actually believe west from thinking critical did a video too i want to say and then i came across the video from comics explained saying how this was the best story 
the best Superman story ever. Yeah, you, you let that sink in for a minute. So, basically, we see the old story. It continues on. Clark is perspirating. I like these sort of basic foundation things. He hasn't done that since he moved to planet. Those are all really cool. I like the idea of Clark being that nervous for something. But what happens is they realize in this re-education camp, because we know that's not, it's a concentration camp, <laughs> that they can use low-grade um, kryptonite radiation and depower Superman. So they obviously capture him. And at that point, this is where we're going to um, say, yeah, trigger warning. I don't know if you want to listen to this. I don't necessarily know if you want to um, talk about man. Man. Oh, God. Um, We're just going to say the R word. Okay. So there is nothing in this comic book that actually says the word. There's nothing. But that does not mean it is not clearly hinted upon. We actually see Clark in a very vulnerable, screechy position, like he may have been bent over. Um, and then they, um, he goes on and he says, every day they would restrain me in a way that felt left me exposed and vulnerable. And every day for eight months, they... They did things to me. They did things to me while I was forced to look at him. And that is his captor, uh, Nikolai Koslov. Now, clearly, John Ridley in this situation knew how he was phrasing this. They could have very, very easily changed a few words and made it seem like you know, they, they tortured me, they hit me, they beat me up, but he knew exactly what I was, what he was doing. And then even in the background, you actually see a man with like a, uh, a concrete pole and it, and it very much so seems like they are assaulting him. And I, I think there is a lot of outrage about this. Yes, there absolutely is. Even if it is delayed, there is a lot of outrage, but I actually as much as I fight against outrage, this one's warranted. This is not okay to put in a book about Superman that, again, not every single Superman story needs to be aspirational. Not every single one needs to make you feel good. But it also shouldn't take your heroes and violate them in a way that makes the story of Superman unrecognizable. What I mean is Clark should have never been in this position. Uh, giggity. Um, he should have never been in. Yes, this sort of situation happens. And I'm trying to be very careful with my words here. The story could have still happened. The story could have very easily still happened. All you would have had to do is change a little bit of the art and a little bit of the wording. And this story honestly could have been pretty decent. There's nothing wrong with what he was trying to do. And I actually appreciate when people go back and expand upon old lore. When people go back and this is from the 70s, you know, kind of going, you know, where the 70s was all about capitalism versus communism. It's kind of ramping back up into a point, right? So I appreciate that. I appreciate bringing that back around. But you did damage to the original. You made it seem like this was the continuation. And unfortunately, really in a poor way. How can you look at Superman and say, yep, for this time I'm going to write him. I am going to rape him. I just said it. What is wrong with you, John Ridley? Again, this is very old. It is not in continuity. But it doesn't excuse a damn thing in this. There is absolutely something fundamentally wrong if that is where you want to go with Superman. And we even see him a little bit further on 
when he's talking to the older version of Koslov, he um he daydreams about killing him. Superman daydreams about killing him. And you know, I can't even blame him. Normally I would say Superman shouldn't be daydreaming about killing a person because that that is a line you don't cross. But the way John Ridley wrote this story with Superman being assaulted, can you really blame him? I don't know. Again, this is old. This is not in continuity. This is inexcusable. I'm just glad people are finally seeing it. <laughs> Anyways, let me know, of course, what you guys think. This is really a shame. I, I I am glad it is being getting a little bit of limelight because people need to look at this and go, why would this happen? How could this happen? And how can we fix it? Luckily, like I said, Jamie S. Rich isn't there. And the Superman editor seems to be a bit better. So hopefully there's that. Hopefully, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about all of this, this insanity. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye.